First, the U.N. Secretary General is calling for a demilitarized zone around Europe's largest nuclear power plant. The facility is located in a Russian-occupied territory in Ukraine. Both sides blame each other for shelling the area. It comes as the Pentagon announced Friday another $775 million in security assistance to Ukraine. Charlie Daggett is Kyiv with more. That arms package can't come quickly enough for field commanders that we've spoken to, and what has already been supplied is making a huge difference. But the main focus today has been the rising tensions over the nuclear power plant. Tonight, the threat of a nuclear disaster at Europe's largest nuclear power plant has just gone next level. Ukraine accusing Russia of preparing to stage a false flag incident today. Russia accusing Ukraine of trying to trigger an accident at the complex. Russian forces even ordered employees to stay home, according to Ukraine's state-run energy firm. The brinksmanship follows two weeks of intensive shelling, both sides trading artillery strikes and accusations. The UN Secretary General has called the attacks on the plant suicide. If we demilitarize, as we propose, the plant, the problem will be solved. In an effort to show just how seriously Ukraine is taking the threat. Emergency workers dressed head to toe in protective suits in the city of Zaporizhia held nuclear disaster drills. Scrubbing down volunteers posing as radiation exposed victims. A stage managed performance for the cameras maybe, but the risks are real. Russian forces captured the plant in the early days of the war back in March, but fighting has escalated drastically this month. Part of an offensive that has seen cities like Kharkiv come under bombardment that's killed dozens of civilians in the past two days alone. But fighting over a frontline nuclear power plant risks catastrophic collateral damage that extends far beyond these battlefields. A dramatic new development comes out of the office of French President Emmanuel Macron. Following a phone call, Russian President Vladimir Putin has agreed for a team of independent inspectors to visit the plant. Catherine? Charlie Daggett, thank you. For more on this, I'm joined by the Ukrainian ambassador to the United States, Oksana Markarova. Ambassador, what's the latest intelligence you can share about the Zaporizhia plant in eastern Ukraine? Thank you for having me, Catherine. Well, the situation remains very, very uh, tense. And as our president says for, for a number of uh, times now, we demand Russians to leave the station and transfer it to us right away because uh, the personnel, the Ukrainian personnel that is there, of course, is very responsibly continue the functioning of the station. But there should not be unauthorized personnel at the station and all the armed forces of the Russian Federation and all the people who are waiting uh, there, uh, except for the nuclear personnel, should not be there. And mm -hmm. it's, a, it's, it's a great risk for Ukraine. It's a great risk for the station. But ultimately, this is the largest European uh, nuclear station. So it's not a place where the military people should be even around. We have reports of shelling of the plant, also the Russians storing weapons at the plant. Is the situation becoming so concerning that it could become another Chernobyl? Well, we really hope not, but we saw that pattern of behavior of Russians mm -hmm. when they occupied the uh, Kiev Oblast in Chernobyl where they tried to turn the station into the military base, mm -hmm. and they also were shooting near the station without noticing that it's a, it's a very, very uh, high-security and high-risk mm -hmm. object. So they are shooting uh, near the station. They are shooting at the uh, Ukrainian cities across the river. Uh, and, yes, we see that they are trying to store uh, some of the equipment there. Again, mm -hmm. you know, for all of that, the only answer is they have to leave, not mm -hmm. to say that they have to leave from all the territory of Ukraine, because, you know, this aggression and them being on our sovereign land mm -hmm. is a violation of pretty much every international law and, and, and human decency. But to be at the, at the, at the nuclear plant is mm -hmm. another level of terrorism that Russia is actually doing in addition to all the war crimes. Let's take that a step further. Are the Russians weaponizing Ukraine's nuclear power plants? Well, Russians are weaponizing everything. 
Look at what they're doing. Everything, mm -hmm. you know, they, they were weaponizing the migrants, they're weaponizing the grain. When they try to create a food crisis, when they try to star starve so many people, when they try to starve Ukrainians too. Uh, they're weaponizing uh, pretty much everything they touch. And yes, right now, you know, unless they leave right away, we can clearly say that they are uh, using a nuclear station mm -hmm. uh, for, for, for their own purposes uh, and trying to, to create a threat out of it. Can the Turkish president bring this to a positive resolution with Russian President Vladimir Putin? We don't know. You know, definitely mm -hmm. uh, the intent of President Putin and Russian Federation is to mm -hmm. destroy Ukraine and is ultimately to destroy democracies. So uh, that's why they attacked in 2014. That's why they attacked us in 2022. And uh, unless they are pushed and mm -hmm. uh, we together force them to take any uh, right steps, I don't think there is an intent there to actually do something good. So everything from leaving there. Kiev Oblast because our brave armed forces made them leave, or to allow the grain deal because there was such a strong uh, response uh, in addition to the armed forces of Ukraine, strong demand from the international community. Uh, you know, that, that's the only way how we can actually force Russia to adhere to at least some international principles. So again, we have to be very strong and united on demanding them to end this war to get out from Ukrainian territory and, uh, in particular, get out from the nuclear power plant. On a practical level, what can the Biden administration deliver to you right now that would make a significant difference in this conflict? We're talking today when Biden administration announced yet another package of security assistance, so much needed security assistance and so much appreciated, 775 million worth of uh, all the equipment and uh, uh, military support that we need. And this is what we need to continue and accelerate. We need more weapons, we need more support to Ukraine, and we need more sanctions to Russia. Nothing new. But we have to stay the course and we have to continue doing it mm -hmm. until Russia changes its behavior. We have to make a case uh, not only to defend Ukraine, but also to defend uh, all of us who believe in peace and believe in democratic mm -hmm. values. Ambassador Markarova, thank you. Thank you.